Have you ever wondered how much in control of our own minds we actually are? For all the celebration and awe that went towards our abilities to reason during the Enlightenment era, other works help to illustrate that we might not be in full control of our faculties, such as The Telltale Heart by Edgar Allan Poe. <music> Hi everyone, my raven Nevermore and I want to tell you a little bit about Edgar Allan Poe's short story, The Telltale Heart. It was published in 1843 and considered one of Poe's best works, as well as a prime example of gothic fiction. It features an unnamed narrator whose main point is to prove to some mysterious reader or listener his sanity. Now, Poe is most known for writing stories that focus on the bizarre and the grotesque. During his lifetime, he just himself struggled with alcoholism, and he lived near poverty for his entire life. He had health issues. Many people who were close to him also died. He himself died at the age of 40, which was only six years after he published this short story. Now, in this story, the narrator murders an old man whom he lives with. Adding to the mystery is the fact that we have no idea who the old man is or what his relationship is to the narrator. The only reason the narrator gives to us for murdering the old man at all is because of his glass vulture eye. But even the way he presents this cause is very suspect because he says, I think it was his eye. Yes, it was this. The eye haunts the narrator, leading him to become murderously obsessed with relieving himself of whatever it is that the eye represents. Right, Nevermore? So, he stares at the old man every night at midnight for a week while he sleeps. And then on the eighth night, there's this prolonged scene of tension when the old man is aware of his murderer's presence, but he can't see or hear him. Poe's emphasis is much more on the abstract psychology of the mind. So the old man could sense his impending murder because it was the mournful influence of the unperceived shadow that caused him to feel, although he neither saw nor heard, to feel the presence of my head within the room. The narrator then hears the old man's heart beating, which could be a manifestation of the narrator's own anxiety or his imagined sense of guilt. Either way, he buries the old man under the floorboards and then is driven mad when he still hears the beating heart during a conversation with some police officers. What's that, Nevermore? Oh, he reminds me that this ends much like a poem called The Raven, in which the narrator similarly ends up overcome, and in a state of near insanity. Now, in the opening paragraph of The Telltale Heart, he asks, How, then, am I mad? And throughout the story, there's a preoccupation not with proving his innocence, but with proving his sanity. In fact, one of the great ironies of the story is that he spends his time explaining how rational and logical his actions are, all to justify his irrational behavior. The mind is not unified and capable of improvement or progress. In this story, we see imagination and science seeming to be at odds with one another. One other thing about this story, it's a short story. And you ought to know that Poe is considered the father of the short story. He insisted that all of his works be designed to be consumed in one sitting so that it could maintain a unity of effect. The unity of effect means that the piece is composed in such a While we're at it, do you remember how I quoted the entirety of The Raven for you in class? I have other things memorized, too, and I think memorization is important. So, here's your extra credit opportunity. You can memorize anything that's been written by Emerson, Thoreau, or Rapau. You'll get one extra credit point for any line of poetry, and two extra credit points for any line of prose. Just quote them to me in class, and boom, extra credit. I hope you enjoy the story. I'm looking forward to talking it over with you in class. Until then, see ya.